Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota, and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. I'm very excited because today I'm featuring some new products from our upcoming September through December mini catalog that debuts on September 6th. Um, so, lots of fun stuff in here. I can't open it up yet because the catalog is not live, but I'm going to present to you the products that we're going to use. So we're going to bring in the Winter Melody, um, sorry, Winter Meadow suite of products, and that includes a stamp set, a set of dies, a pack of 12 by 12 designer paper, and a roll of ribbon. Now you don't have to buy all these things together in the suite collection if you're interested in these products. You can get them separately, but I do recommend getting the stamp set and dies together because that way you're gonna save 10% when you buy the bundle. And you'll want them together because they coordinate. The images in this stamp set all have um, a, a, a die that coordinates with them so you can stamp and then cut it out really quickly without having to fussy cut. We've also got some extra detail dies in this set. Little tiny berries. Um, this uh, little piece of foliage that we're gonna work with today. We're gonna to use those two pieces. And then we got this extra branch piece, this one here that I just shared a card with mm, a few days ago. It was a mistletoe card. And then we've also got these little snowflake impressions, um, a fun leaf here, and then this, this die. So there's lots of fun detail type of dies uh, besides the frame dies. So that's Magical Meadow. It includes a stamp set, uh, the sentiments with the stamp set too. So you can make full cards. You don't have to worry about having multiple stamp sets to make some beautiful cards with this. This is the sheer uh, half inch silver and white ribbon, ribbon. And you can see how beautiful it is just, you know, by looking at it like this. But when you see it in projects, you're just gonna drool and you're, you're gonna need it because it's one of those, it's one of those staple ribbons, I think. This is the designer paper, and we have an A side and we have a B side to it. So let me show you the A side. Um, this is little tiny trees. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. And then we've got this sheet, which is really fun. You can do like six card fronts with a sheet of designer paper like this. You just have to you know, cut four inch strips and then cut them down to fit on the front of a card. So you can get six card fronts with a sheet like this. And then we have um, some beautiful berries. Everything's kind of got that watercolor look to it. We've got these great little scenes of um, hill, hilly um, tree, tree landscape type scenes, kind of in a bluish color, blueberry, um, more like a night of navy is in there too. And then this one is beautiful. We're gonna be using that today, little berries on leaves and this is gorgeous. Can you imagine just putting some photographs directly onto this paper? You have an instant scrapbook page. Now let me show you the B sides. These are the ones that are not as prominent or dominant, I should say. And most of them kind of just have a wash look to them. This looks like frost on a window or a lake. Um, then we've got the blueberry color. Um, I think this one is Misty Meadow, but you can see navy in there as well. So I could see you using Night of Navy with this. We've got kind of a smoky slate or a light gray wash. Then we've got this beautiful color, which is kind of peacocky. Um, there's a pretty peacock color we have in our collection. And then this one here, let's, let's just take a look at the colors so we know what we're talking about, Rachel. Um, in the colors that are in this pack, we have basic black, blueberry bushel, garden green, lost lagoon. I can see some lost lagoon in there. Misty moonlight, moody mauve, Pebbled Path, which I believe is this one here. And then we also have Pretty Peacock. Hey, I was right. Um, shaded Spruce and Smoky Slate. And the Shaded Spruce I can even see in there too. And then we have the last sheet. So those are the six, um, six 12 by 12 sheets. You get two of each of these. So you can actually get 12 sheets of designer paper. So now that I've shown you all that is in that suite, Let's go back because I want to talk about two important people that are with us during the live. So if you are watching during the live, let's give a shout out to Trisha Josephs on YouTube and Lisa Marshall on Facebook. They are my moderators. During the live on YouTube, um, Trisha is there to help answer questions. That is one area that I can't go back to and actually click on comments and respond to. So um, she's there to be my, my ears, my eyes, my, my answers. 
Um, so thank you, Trisha. And Lisa is over on Facebook. So again, say hi to my helpers. I love them. They are important people. Um, if this is the first time that you're watching, welcome. Uh, this is my blog post or my website, by the way, my um, place where you can visit my blog posts that I share uh, links to in my videos. And um, I invite you to go over there and subscribe so that you get the blog posts directly into your email inboxes and you can get those ideas um, quickly that way. Okay. So what else do I want to mention? We're going to make a frameless, oh, I didn't even tell you what we're going to make. We're going to make a frameless clear front shaker card. Um, I got inspiration from a card that I received from Lisa Marshall. And so I'm going to show you that card first. And then we're going to dive into creating uh, one of those cards fully um, using the Winter Meadow Suite. And then I'm gonna show you another variation of it, just give you a couple tips on that with some pieces that I'll have, I'll just kind of um, create a little part to that card and you can see how I adapted it to make that version. Then I have a third version um, and those three versions using the Winter Meadow Suite have a supply list that will be in my blog post and in my video uh, description which is actually in the video description of YouTube right now but on Facebook it will go over there as well um, on the PDF I always share a PDF in my blog post that you can download and I'm going to show that to you in a second here that is um, only going to include the supplies for the the two main winter meadow cards not the third one um, also, if you visit my blog post after this is over with, you'll be able to see um, information, a supply list for another version, because I'm going to show you a fourth version today. So you're going to see five different cards, Lisa's, my three with the Winter Meadow, and then another one using Paper Pumpkin products from the August Meaningful Flowers Kit. So, hey, Wendy from Apple Valley. Good to see your name pop up. Okay, let's go over to the PDF so you can see the supplies and you can see photographs of the two main cards. So again, these two cards are shown um, in, the, in the PDF and those are the supplies that are listed for just those two cards. The third card again will be included in the supplies in the blog post and the video descriptions. And then the Video description in the blog post will also include supplies for the paper pumpkin one. So if you're looking for that information, always go to those sources. Uh, you can see that we're going to make a couple different versions here. These are the measurements that you'll need. And then if there's a measurement for just one of the cards versus the other, it's listed here. So like this one says for the bottom card. Okay. So if it says for the bottom card, you don't need it for the top card. And then all the supplies are listed below. Some of them you can see my cursor turns into a little pointer. That means you can click on it and purchase it directly now. But some of these, like the deckled circle dies, the silver and white ribbon, winter, med uh, winter meadow suite, all that stuff is not clickable yet because the products are not live. So um, those products you'll have to go and search for. That's why I gave you the order numbers um, if you're watching this and you're looking for those things later on. You just click on my shop button. Anytime you're on my website if um, or on my Facebook page or my YouTube channel, there's a shop button so you can always purchase products directly that way. Okay, I think that's it. So we got all the, all the um, details out of the way. Um, we will be doing a prize drawing. So every Wednesday live that I do, we do prize drawings and Trisha will help me out by picking um, prize winners from our live comments and then we have past um, weeks winners to announce too because for a whole week um, we also have comments that come in uh, from people who watch the after live videos the recordings so comment away and you might get entered into a prize drawing for that too so we will be drawing next week's winners at the end of this video and one more thing, sorry. My blog post that's connected to this video, it won't go live until later on today. Not 12.15 like normal, but a little bit later because we have some work going on on my website. So if you've actually visited my website, stampyourartout.com just now, it's not going to come up because there's some updates being done and things like that. And so 
I'll need to finish my blog post <laughs> later on today. And it should be live hopefully by 4 p.m. Central Time, okay? I think that's it. I'm looking, looking, looking. That's it. We're gonna move on, we're gonna start demonstrating. So let's move to the desktop. Here I am, okay. <laughs> so this is the card that Lisa Marshall shared with me. Um, and she just, she sends me cards often. So I get inspired by her often. It's so fun to see the, the fun ideas that she gets inspired by out there. Um, anyways, it's a birthday card. My birthday was in August and um, it's like a faker shaker, right? So it's using the clear envelopes that Stampin' Up! Uh, offers, um, but it's the whole front flap of the card. So you can see the actual part that closes on the clear envelope, which is at this top. She used that and tucked it inside. So there's two layers here on the back panel. So you wanna have two layers on your back panel in order to seal up a portion of that clear envelope. We're gonna be making our card to open this way though. So um, that will reduce any width issues because you can see here she folded it in so she could get it into the envelope. Um, and so I decided, you know what, let's, let's make it a little different and that way this front flap will be exactly four and a quarter inches. We'll give that a go. I love all the sequins she put in hers. I did not add that many in my card, but you could definitely load it up like she did. It makes for a little bit more fun and festiveness when you shake your card. Um, she used a past paper pumpkin kit. Love it, love it, love it. And there is the inside. So um, something that you'll wanna keep in mind is that with the horizontal, um, the one that opens this way, like hamburger style, those of you that are teachers, um, hamburger style card versus hot dog, right? Longer. Um, one thing that you'll want to note is that the flap that closes the envelope is going to be seen. It's not going to be tucked within. It's going to be showing here. So I'm going to just show you some tips and tricks on how to hide that. Uh, also, I really love that the, the vellum sheet inside, it sort of takes away the static that you can get in a shaker card. These sequins flow really nicely and I believe it's because of the vellum sheet. I think that there's something that happens to um, the, the static, it goes away. You guys know what I'm talking about who have made faker shakers before or just shakers in general. All right, so let's start. Let's take our early espresso cardstock and we need to cut it like we would with a regular card. So it's not just a quarter sheet, it's gonna be a half sheet, so we're gonna cut in this direction, halfway, at five and a half inches. And then we're gonna take our scoring blade, rotate our cardstock, and we're gonna score it with the light one at four and a quarter inches. So half of 11 was five and a half, half of eight and a quarter, I'm sorry, eight and a half is four and a quarter. So we're moving to the four and a quarter inch mark and we're going to score. Okay, this is what you need to use for your regular card bases, right? This is the perfect size. It fits our medium um, basic white envelopes. Now, if you're looking at A4 size cardstock and you're using C6 size envelopes, you can adjust this. Um, I do not have the measurements, <clears throat> excuse me, for that. But I think this is gonna be a simple enough card to adapt to um, other markets out there, like if you're watching in the UK or um, South Pacific or something. Okay, <clears throat> let's bring in our vellum. Our vellum cardstock needs to also be a quarter of a sheet. So we're gonna cut that at five and a half by five, uh, four and a quarter. It should fit on the front of your card. That's gonna be inserted into the clear envelope. And so you'll wanna grab a, a clear envelope. These are great. These are our most affordable envelopes as far as like pricing goes. You can, you can get a lot of bang for your buck when you purchase the clear envelopes. Um, I don't remember the pricing in the US, but again, every market's different, so you're gonna to need to look that up. You just click on the product in the supply list. Um, but this is something that you can mail your cards in too. These are wide enough to fit a card into and mail. The only thing is, is you're gonna to have to check with your own post office to see about the pickiness of, you know, like what kind of postage they want on it. Um, some post offices require um, the non-machinable just because it's a clear envelope some don't it's it's really dependent on your your post office person I have found 
Okay, and then we also need some designer paper. So again, I told you I was gonna um, use this sheet. So we've got that very pretty berry sheet. On the back side, we've got these beautiful little, um, this beautiful color to do our berries with. So for our second version of the card, we're gonna use one of the dies to cut out a bunch of little berries. That way we don't have to have extra colored cardstock for that portion. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're liking what I'm sharing, you guys. Okay, and then we need a scrap of white because we're going to um, stamp our foliage onto a scrap and die cut it. And I've already, with my other scraps, die cut a couple deckled circles. And the deckled circles, also available September 6th, come in this many sizes. There's a ton of them, you guys. This is gonna be a staple also. You're gonna really want these. I used the one that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seventh from the smallest, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth from the biggest. So you get, you get 16 of these. That's a lot. Okay, so seventh from the smallest, just remember that. Of course, you can do it different. You don't have to use the same exact size I did. Okay, let's put these off to the side. And these are done, so yay. Um, so we're just gonna be die cutting these two today. And then I've already cut for our second card the pieces that we'll need for that. So that'll come a little bit later. Let's start with stamping then. Okay, let's grab our stamps. Magical Meadow. We're going to grab this stamp here. Do you see I do not have a label on the back? So because I don't do this that often, let's just take and add our label to our stamp. Grab the back side of your sheet, and that's where you can peel these little guys off, but don't peel them off completely. Then take both layers. You want to take this layer which is the backing, and you wanna take the actual sticker layer and peel the whole thing up. So you're just loosening where the, um, the backing sticker connects to the main sticker. And then we're gonna take and add it to our clear block directly, nice and flat. Because these are raised, we can peel them off very easily. So those go in the trash. Then you just take a dark piece of cardstock We'll just bring this in and you lay this down right on top and connect this is very sticky so once it's down it's down and I'm coming at an angle so wish me luck <laughs> there we go and now you have your sticker on your stamp um, just you know use your fingernail or the take your pick tool to get under there then you know for the first initial times so that way your sticker won't separate from your stamp but now we have our label on the back of our stamp and we can begin. So for our stamping, we're going to actually use markers. This is one of the first ways that I collected lots of colors for less money. Um, if you're still trying to collect colors, this is a great way to go. Plus, markers have the ability to do lots of different things. You can color multiple colors onto the back of your stamp, which is what we're gonna do today. You can color in images. So if you have an outline image, you can color in with it. Thank you for sharing, Mary Ellen. She said shared, yay. Yes, if you're watching this and you're sharing, um, comment that you shared, because that gets you entered into the prize drawing too. And I appreciate it, and it helps me out, so thanks. <laughs> All right, so we're going to use markers. There's a brush end on each marker, and there's a bullet tip on each marker. The markers have changed, so if you have an old set, we used to have a fine tip on one end. So here's the brush end, and this is the bullet tip end. So it's a little bit easier to do your writing. Um, the fine tip end, it, it just sometimes wouldn't release ink. I'm glad they improved the markers. We're using shaded spruce. We're also using early espresso. So the shaded spruce comes from the Regals set of markers, and the, sh um, the early espresso comes from the neutrals. And I could use the blueberry bushel also from the Regals, it's right here, but I sort of wanted to not have to worry too much about, um, about getting my, my um, or no, we are gonna use it. We're gonna use it, I lied. I'm thinking of my other card, let's pull this out. 
We need our blueberry bushel. And then we also need a product that I forgot to list. And that's another thing that I'll have to edit before 4 p.m. Um, Central Time. Anyways, this product here is important for using if you're going to be coloring on the backs of your stamps. The first thing that I would recommend doing is your middle color. Your middle color can be um, kind of done a little more carefully if you don't have lots of colors to work around. So you just see what I'm doing? I'm just coloring directly onto the stamp, the rubber part of the stamp. And it's kind of a therapeutic thing to do. Um, I don't know if you still do coloring on your own, but those color books that they have for adults or you know, just using outline stamp images and doing some coloring, it is very therapeutic to color. So now I'm just glancing to see if I have enough brown everywhere. These stamps are forgiving, the stamp images I should say, because if you look at them, they are distinctive images. That means they have a light and dark look to them, and it kind of has its own little watercolor wash look already, so that you don't have to worry about like a two-step stamping thing. Plus, because it's a watercolor wash look, you also have that look of if I mess up on my coloring of my stamp like this, it, the colors don't have to be perfect. Watercoloring is not a perfect or a clear and concise type of, you know, here's the edge of my color, here's the beginning of my color. You don't have that with watercoloring. You have colors that flow together and are more um, natural looking. So um, as I come and, and color all of this, I'm working with my shaded spruce color now and I'm avoiding the berry areas. If I accidentally get a little bit of green, Onto, and I'm gonna zoom in because you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Rachel, get a little closer. There we go. Um, so do you see I, I messed up a little bit. I put some green where it shouldn't be. But that's what the blender pen is for. So we're gonna bring that in next. Again, if you have your green and your browns kind of flowing together, I think that works because that's the way nature is. They're not, you know, it's not a cartoon in nature. It's more flowing. All right. So, and if you miss a couple spot, spots too, that's totally fine too. Some of you might be saying, wait, wait a minute, your ink is gonna be drying on there, but we're gonna re-moisten it by exhaling onto our stamp. And now I think we just have the berries left. Cap the marker and let's grab the brush end of our blueberry bushel color. And we're gonna go through the berries. But when we get to that one berry, we're gonna need to do a little bit of erasing. So, oh, one thing too about this is if the color doesn't go on super smooth on each one, it could be because again, it's distinctive stamps and you do have that light and dark look just within the stamps. I mean, if you look at these berries right here, if I move away a little bit, you can see this one here is slightly darker looking than this one. It's kind of weird. <laughs> But that's normal because we're using, um, it's kind of got a stippled look to it. Oh my gosh, this is so relaxing. Okay, we're almost done. Um, we're gonna come in and get that blender pen next. We have a lot of products that have the word blend in them. We have blends markers, which are alcohol-based markers. We have blender pens, and we have blending brushes. <laughs> All right, blending brushes are those things with the little bristles on the end that help you to put on smooth color, um, kind of faint color. Okay, so I'm just gonna wipe this and I'm gonna run it onto my scrap paper. And I'm gonna do that until the surface of my rubber is clear again. Plus, you'll wanna own these just for coloring. It's a wonderful tool for coloring with watercolor-based inks, like your um, classic pads or these markers here. Okay, so we have it all colored. It takes a bit of time, so you might not want to reproduce this for like 50 Christmas cards, unless you're okay with that. But, <laughs> but for a few special ones that get the shaker uh, special card in the mail, you, it's worth it. Now we're going to exhale, so I'm going to bring it up towards my mouth, and you're going to see in my other camera, my smaller camera there, what I'm doing. I'm putting my moist, exhaled breath back onto the bottom of my stamp and it's moistening that ink again. <clears throat> and 
and now we will stamp it down. You don't make to you don't have to make the ha huh sound. I did that just to you know emphasize. Okay, so we're stamping this down, and when we lift up, look at the beautiful image, multicolored image, just like that. All right. Next, we're gonna do some die cutting. So let's bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And now I'm gonna zoom out because we're way too close. And we've got our platforms in order. We've got our one, which is the base. We've got our two for die, um, for adapting with dies. And then we've got our threes. My scratchy three cutting pad is on the bottom because I like to have my dies downward initially. And let me grab that die. We need the one that matches with, oh, here they are, that matches with this image, and that is this one here. And I think I'm gonna bring in some uh, sticky tape. Just, I have some little post-it notes. That will help too. That'll help to hold my, my die in place. So let's just set that up first. So you want to have the die outline lined up with your image so that the image is right up to the edge of your, your dies. Okay, and then I'll just stick this down somewhere where it kind of holds across both um, parts of the paper. Then we'll lay it carefully onto our scratchier cutting pad, cutting mat. We'll take this one and our berries. Look at those cute little berries. So those are going to cut out. I don't know how many they are. There's 11. It's gonna cut out 11 berries. Let's turn this a little bit so you can see better. And we put our non-scratchy one on top. Now when you're using your stamp and cut and emboss machine, continue to use your scratchy pad on the bottom. You can flip them over once in a while too. Um, but use it on the bottom until it kind of gets worn out and then replace that one with your top one that's only going to get kind of like little tiny impressions in it for a while. You can see kind of the top impression of the dies. This one that will then become your, your bottom cutting pad and you can replace this one with a new one. That's how I do it and I feel like it keeps my die, um, die cutting, mat, um, cutting boards, my cutting mats really clean and makes the most of them. All right, so I cut these out, not for this card, but for the next card. So let's grab our tape and pull that off. Don't, don't lose your dies. <laughs> we'll stick those over here. And there is the result of our die cutting. So we have that beautiful floral piece there. And then I'm just gonna you know what, let's just leave these on here. We'll leave those on there and we'll pick them off with our take your pick tool. That will work. Okay, what's next? I think we can start assembling because we've got our base, we've got our clear envelope, and yep, I think we, oh, we have one more piece to stamp. We have to stamp on our deckled circles with our sentiments. So let's grab that stamp set again, which I put over here, and we're gonna use the sentiment that says, may this season of sparkle bring joy and delight, and the one that says, winter wishes. And for mounting, I like the D size block for this one, and I think the C size is perfect for this one. I mount my stamps at an angle so that I'm not looking at the, um, the bottom or the edges of my clear blocks as I'm trying to line things up. I look at the actual words um, or images on my stamps, okay? Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> All right, yes, I, I believe so too. Um, we don't give our water-based stamp and write markers, which is what I used enough love because our blends are so popular right now, but these are fabulous markers. And I think, you know, if you like that multicolor look on the backs of your stamp or on, the, on your stamp images and you wanna do it with that technique, this is a, the stamp and write markers are great to invest in. We're gonna bring our ink pad. This ink pad is called Early Espresso. It matches the cardstock. It matches some of the colors that are in the designer paper. So we're just gonna open that up. By the way, if you are enjoying what I'm sharing, I invite you to like and subscribe. Okay, we're gonna just stamp this right in the center of 
uh, one of our circles. That's going to go on the inside of our card. On this one, though, we're going to stamp that onto the upper right, okay, because we want to make room for our beautiful foliage sprig and our ribbon. Um, let's clean our stamps. I don't show this often either. This is our stamp and scrub, and it's got um, two sides to it, so you kind of have your washer and your dryer, and then you grab the mist. This is my favorite way to clean stamps because I feel like it's the least messy. Um, I'm not a big chamois person. There's other ways you can clean your stamps. The stamp and chamois is one, but I really, I go back to this because it just keeps my fingers from touching any ink. So you wash and then you dry and your stamp is ready to put back in your box. You can also stamp off onto your scrap paper so that this doesn't get full of ink as fast. And that way, you know, you don't have to rinse it out or wash it out in the sink too often. But yeah, just wash it with, um, with soap and water, like dish soap. That's what I use. I just get my sink full of um, warm, sudsy water and let them soak for a while. And then I ta uh, take and um, clean them up. And here, sorry, I forgot to mention, you can take them out of the tray. So you just take and get like a knife or something underneath there and you can take and pull these little guys out of there and clean them off. So, and they do get little fibers that come off of them like you can see on mine, but I seriously have not bought a new one in years and years and years and years and years. Like they last forever. Okay, let's start assembling. Oh yeah, this is for our second card and I'm gonna close up this ink pad because knowing me lately, I have been getting ink on myself. <laughs> I don't want to do that today. All right, so let's start with the base of our card. So the base, we want to make sure will stay shut. So we're going to fold it with the bone folder, give it a good crease, and then we're going to open it up and we're going to use seal adhesive. Seal adhesive is my preference on making these Faker Shaker clear front um, borderless or frameless cards because um, when you adhere things to plastic, the glue is not so helpful. Things slide, sometimes they peel off easiest, easier. I think tape or like tear and tape is gonna be your best bet when it comes to applying things to the clear um, envelopes. So we're just gonna run this along the inside, four outside edges as close to the outside edge as possible, like this. And then we're gonna do the opposite but just need, we just need one, one edge, the outside most edge here. And I'm just gonna go in a little bit closer. Okay, so this is how you prepare to grab your clear envelope. Set that aside. Here's your clear envelope. You need to decide whether you want the opening of your clear envelope to be on the bottom when it opens up or on the top when it opens up. Um, I personally don't care. I'm just gonna put it on the bottom because it's gonna be seen either way and I feel like it would be less noticeable if it's towards the bottom. And it's gonna be on the inside, so my card flap is gonna open this way. Let's insert our vellum, and you can see our vellum is not as wide, and that is good. <laughs> we don't want our vellum, oops, we want it off to this side. We don't want our vellum to be all the way to the edge of our clear envelope, because this part is gonna be the part that attaches to the rest of the card. You need that excess right there, and it's not a whole heck of a lot, which is why you want to make sure that your adhesive is as close to the edge of this as possible on this side and on this side, because it needs to grab this quarter inch amount of clear envelope, okay? All right, um, so shove that vellum right up in this corner. This is what's going to get sealed, and it's going to open like this from our card, okay? So we need it up in that corner. And then we need to flip it over, and on the front, we need to insert our sequins. So this is where you add your sequins. So you can take and dump them, or, and I need to buy more, or you can take and spoon them in, however you wanna do it, but keep them on top of the vellum. Do not let them stray from the vellum, okay? So then if we wanna flip it over to seal our envelope, we need to kind of flip this way, right? Because if we flip the other way, it's gonna get in this little spot. So shove them into and out of the way, and then grab the backing off, and we're going to, there's just a little excess there too. There's a tiny little bit of excess right here on this flap. So you wanna fold that up too. You wanna get that up and out of the way, 
And you might have to even like fold it beforehand before peeling the backing off, Rachel. <laughs> That's okay, I know what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> so now that we've kind of folded all that, we're gonna take and press this down like that. Make sure that you don't get your fingerprints on the adhesive part. Make sure it doesn't touch your skin because any little skin cells, I know that's gross, but any little blemish that you get on this adhesive is going to make that adhesive stand out even more and you don't want that. So only peel this backing off when you're ready to seal it down. Don't do as Rachel just did. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're gonna take and fold this direction. So this part here is gonna get folded up and the bone folder will help with that too. I'm just gonna come and give that a good crease. Okay, now we're gonna attach this, this excess part here, onto the front of our card. So this is gonna be, or I mean the base of our card. So this is gonna be what we attach to on this side, avoiding the one with more adhesive. So lift this up, lay this against it, like so, and remember I want my sealed part of my envelope on the bottom of my card. So right now it looks like it's on the top of the card, it's not, this is gonna get connected. So just go like this and line them up so they're all, you know, edge to edge, bottom edge, sides at side edges, and you're going to line them up and then you're going to slowly from the middle, moving outward, connect all of that good stuff. Okay. All that excess. Okay. So now we just take, and because these are uh, it's a folded piece of paper and not two separate pieces. All we have to do is just lay it down and it'll all connect and seal up. And now our back is holding on to the envelope part of the card. Okay. All right. There's our shaker stuff. Again, we probably could have put more like Lisa did on hers. I mean, look at the generosity. I got spoiled with that, didn't I? <laughs> all right. So now we're going to add our decorations. So here is that um, beautiful piece of designer paper. We're just gonna put uh, adhesive in the four corners. Here you could use the multi-purpose liquid glue if you want to, decide which direction looks best to you, and center that on the inside of the card. This could also be the area of your card where you write. So, <laughs> thanks Judy. Um, so this could be uh, like a paper that has a a less intense design, which I'll show you on another card. Um, or you can do what Lisa did, and you can put a panel there if it's a dark design or a busy design. So you could do that. On the, um, the next step now, we did this. We're gonna now do this part. So this is where we add our inside layer. And you can see on Lisa's, she does not have an inside layer. That's totally fine too. I believe that the vellum kind of takes away from any of that adhesive that you would normally see. You really don't notice it much um, on, you know, like the adhesive to, to, to put this down, you're not gonna notice it much. So you don't have to have a back-to-back -back image like on a lot of clear front cards, but I've chosen to do that on this one because I wanted to show off more of those berries. So you'll just lay this in the front, centered, flip it over, we're gonna lay this down, but before we do that, we wanna add some ribbon, and the ribbon is gonna to wrap to the back. So you need about five inches of ribbon and some regular tape. Because this ribbon is very movable, I mean, you can, if you'd go like this and add it, it's a thinner piece of ribbon. It's no longer a half of an inch. If you go like that, it's a half an inch. I mean, it's, it's crazy stretchable kind of ribbon. So I'm just using regular 3M um, scotch tape, and I'm putting a little bit on the end of that piece way out far so I have room to wrap it and then I'm wrapping it to the back okay then I'm taking my next piece and this is where I can flip it over a little bit easier uh, or better it's easier to flip it over line it up now flip it over and tape it down and what's fun about this ribbon is you have kind of a especially on like this finished one here it kind of looks like it's wrapping upward it has that that flow, it's really pretty. Okay, so this is ready to add now. So you just put your adhesive right over the top of the ribbon areas and the tape areas. And 
get, move these so that there's a little bit flatter surface and then take and line up your circles looking at your word wishes so that that's parallel to the bottom and the top of your card and stick that down and then we've got this layer this important layer that we worked so hard on we're going to add that with dimensionals so let's see here let's let's take a peek at where this is going to lay so we want to have for sure a dimensional there and I think we can get one in there perfect okay so this will kind of help hold that ribbon in place too a couple of them will and then you can add even more but you don't want to add any dimensionals that will go outside that circle because those will definitely look funny um, on the flip side or the inside of the card so I'm avoiding the very ends of this piece okay now we'll take the release paper off the dimensionals dimensionals are one of the best adhesives ever if you do not have them and you're not using them in your card making it's a small investment but it gives a big impact I really love the look of a little shadow underneath it almost gives you the illusion that you've mounted your piece onto another piece of cardstock um, shadows just give depth uh, and again super affordable we're gonna bring those sequins back in and this time we're gonna grab the multi-purpose glue um, I've put it into my precision tip bottle and I'm just gonna add a little drop of glue up here oops like that and then up here and then one down here and we're grabbing our take your pick tool now we've got another end that has this little gummy spot here and that helps to pick up some sequins so we're gonna take a big one set it here we're gonna take a little one flip it over and set it here and then we'll take a medium size because there are three different size sequins in your packet of sequins it's so fun you guys three different sizes I love different size embellishments so now you have that look on your card let's bring in the finished one and let's just make sure we have everything on there I think we did it we did it yay so those are special Christmas cards to send to um, your loved ones let's now take these pieces and just show what I did to make the other version of it so if you're not somebody who owns all the markers or you know you don't mind a little bit of fussiness with die cutting you can take and do it this way instead because the dies oops if we can get this piece out of here the dies come with I'm really mangling it oh look at I bent it all out of shape okay the dies come with detail dies as well like I mentioned to you so that's when we bring in our little tiny berries and those are still on our cutting mat so my recommendation is instead of oops you can't see because I'm all zoomed out again there's our berries okay my recommendation is to cut use this as the base and cut from this one because this one here is only going to require you to have one long piece so you just kind of cut off all of these little um, berry slash um, uh, I don't know greenery pieces right you cut those all out of the way and then you end you end up with a stick <laughs> a stick remember when we used to play with sticks as kids okay leave the other berries on there the ones that are in the middle okay those you don't need to cut them out of there we're gonna we're gonna do another trick so again my precision tip bottle will help me to get my glue right where I want it to be without too much mess so we'll go right down the back side of this um, take and lift that up get under there there we go and we'll lay this down on top because I kind of mangled it pulling it out it's gonna take me a while to <laughs> line everything up hang on it got shifted a bit the brown one is the one that is more accurate okay get it back in line it'll help to stiffen that green again if we get that brown on there see how I just turned it into a green and brown branch super easy and quick and now 
Um, let's poke that little extra, extra piece out of there. And now we take and use the um, precision tip and we just do a tiny little dot of glue. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. We've got 11 berries on there and we have 11 berries that we cut out with the designer paper color. And you'll think at first, oh gosh, they, you can't really see them. But once you add them, oops, once you add them, they really do pop enough to show you that there's these beautiful berries in this greenery. And my hand is sticky. <laughs> we may not complete this whole thing before the glue dries. Let's just do a couple more. These down here, you just cover up. Oh, my gummy end of my take your pick tool is starting to, it needs a replacement. I need to run it, I, you know what, I'll show you guys that, okay? Hang on, let me get a couple more glue dots on here, or glue, glue, glue drops, there we go. So we have this one, I'm just gonna put these last two here and then um, I'll show you what I've got. Okay, I'll finish the other four later, but you can see how those berries, even against the green over here, really do pop off there. It looks really pretty. And you also get that more natural look like you have in the images of the stamp set and on the images of the designer paper because you've used the blueberry paper to get those blueberries, uh, the, the designer paper, I should say, instead of the um, more harsh blue that you get from, um, from the cardstock. It's a little bit deeper and not as soft. So there we go. That's the other version. So those are the two main versions. Um, oh, holly, like red. Oh, that would look great, Kay. I love that idea. Yes. Or if you wanted to do white, although this is uh, the white berries. I don't know. Would you have white berries on something like this? I, I love flowers. I love plants. I love leaves. I just don't know the names of all of those things out there that you can grow and <laughs> so so um, yeah I'm not too intelligent about the types of, of foliage but there's another one same everything else everything else is the same on this card so these two the only difference is here and I also did not add my little sequence at the top there but you could you could if you want and here is a third version of that card the third version doesn't look like a shaker until you open it up. And then you have the fun little sequins in there that look like snow falling. They're really pretty. Um, glue bottle, upside down in a little container with damp paper towel. Yes, you know what? I just take and I pick it off. <laughs> but yeah, you can, you can get smarter than me. I use it so often. But, and then here's the cap. If I cap it more often after I'm done using it, it won't dry at the top. Plus you'll wanna keep it filled so you don't have to do the shaking thing too much either. You can keep it filled. That's another thing I can share real quickly too. You just take this little cap off and when you're filling it, be careful not to touch this into here because then you can't see the, the glue coming down into the container and you don't want the glue to touch the side because when it touches the side, it gets clogged. Can you see that? So you wanna tap every so often, tap it to get that glue to go down in there and um, create a hole again so you can, you can get that glue in there. So yeah, tap often and, and uh, don't let the glue get on the side when you're filling it, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's this one. This one uses a different sheet. It's that one that I mentioned. You can get six cards out of that one sheet. So you could do a bunch of simpler shakers like this. Blueberry bush bushel cardstock. Um, same idea, but here, instead of doing all of that intricate um, coloring or die cutting, all I did was die cut uh, some vellum, th this branch here with vellum, and I cut it into two different pieces and just tucked it down into the ribbon. Plus I made a little tiny knot of ribbon here, and that way it kind of hides and adheres the, the vellum um, areas. Again, glued on sequins. This is just another layer of designer paper. So you can make a quicker version and do a bunch of Christmas cards this way instead. Okay, and then we have the last one. So I have five card ideas showing you um, these, well, this one I just made, right? So we have these four that I shared with you. 
Um, thank you again, Lisa. Love the card. And then this is the fifth idea. So this fifth idea is using the past paper pumpkin, actually August one, it's still current. Um, you can't purchase it once the paper pumpkin ships to subscribers. It's the full kit is usually not available, but you can get a refill kit and the refill kit is still available in the online store. So if you go to um, shopping at my blog, stampyartout.com and click shop, uh, you can go to the paper pumpkin refill category and see the refill for this kit. However, if you're not a paper pumpkin subscriber, you can't buy the refill. So you need to subscribe, buy the kit, and if you don't want to get other kits, you can unsubscribe, but that is the trick around getting those, just so you know. Um, you'll want to check that out. This is a fun, beautiful kit. Uh, so this is the inside and this is the outside. This time I put the flap at the top and I covered it with the banners that come in the kit. So use the same sequence. I also have a Halloween version of a Faker Shaker clear front card like this um, that I finished, but that will be in a future blog post because I can't possibly share them all in one blog post. And I don't even have my blog post done. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, and uh, thank you, Lisa, for bringing that up. She was talking about the precision tip bottle. This is linked in the PDF that you can download. It's in the description of my video. It's in the uh, blog post, but you can also go to my favorite um, extras and you can see some of the other things that I use that aren't Stampin' Up! products, like the magnetic sheets that I keep my dyes on, all that kind of stuff is in that section of my blog. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, we have other stuff that I want to tell you about. Um, bonus days, if you purchased in July, you um, and your purchase was at least $50 before shipping and tax in the US, you have earned a bonus days coupon to redeem in August. You may have used it up already, but this is kind of like a last reminder. Please make sure you have today and tomorrow to use your bonus day coupons that you earned on July purchases. Um, if you cannot find your bonus day coupon, you need to contact your demonstrator. They can hopefully help you out. Otherwise, contact Stampin' Up! directly. Right now, Stampin' Up! is very busy. We're having lots of different things that are causing the phone lines to, to really jam up. So email them. Um, that's probably your best bet at this point if you want them to get back to you. Even if your bonus day coupon, um, let's say you can't, well, just email them. You have it in writing that you tried to attempt to get the bonus day coupon from them before August 31st. And hopefully, um, they can help you out with it before the 31st ends. Um, but yes, contact your demonstrator or you know just look in your emails. <laughs> it's probably still sitting there. The date that you ordered it is the date that you got your coupon emailed to you. So use those up. Also, we have kits on sale, um, not paper pumpkin kits, but the kits collections uh, kits are on sale this month up to 30% off depending on the kit. So make sure that you go to, in fact, I'm just gonna show you. I think I can get there. I can. Let's just go here really quick. So we are on the homepage, stampinup.com. And I'm just going to go to, oh, here, look at the banner just came across the screen. You can wait for the banner and click on it. Um, this is a new kit in the kits collection. It's new this month. That one's also on sale. But yeah, bonus days, the kits. So let's just wait for the kits one to come up. Oh, or we could go to this menu. But here it is. Shop now, but yeah, in the menu, you can also go to shop products and you can choose um, kits collection and then you can choose shop all, which will take us to the same page. Watch, yeah, we're, we're there. Okay, so here's the kits collection and you can see, look at the festive tags kit is 1170 instead of the 13. This is US pricing, by the way. Some kits, they run out, but if they're still showing, that means that they're still available. It's just that you can't get them right now. So this Boho Beach kit, I'm guessing, will not be available um, before the end of the month. But you have lots to choose from. There's a lot of really cool kits in there. Um, so check those out. Also, um, next week on the 6th, besides the mini catalog, where did that go? Besides this mini catalog worth of products going live, you also can go to the menu and click on shop products and then go to this section called online exclusives. And online exclusives is only product that's online. It's not in any of the publications. So you'll wanna shop online once in a while just to see what else is out there. The online exclusives will have five new paper packs 
available. So check that out on September 6th. I got through it all, right? Okay, prize time. Um, prizes today are going to be past prizes that people aren't claiming because I did not have the time to gather up new stuff today and I have a lot of things sitting around. So that's what will get given to people who Trisha picks. But before Trisha chooses those people, I do want to bring in the prize options that we had from last week's winners. And last week's winners both contacted me. The pink bubble bath uh, ribbon roll is gone and the azure afternoon blue one is gone. So we still have these three colors for the two winners that I show you right now. So let me grab them. On Facebook, our winner was, and let me put my email up here, Tim and Jean Steiner. So congratulations to you. Make sure that you reach out to me at stampyourart.comcast.net so that you can claim your prize. Tell me which ribbon roll you want, the white frayed, uh, I think it's called white frayed, white frayed ribbon, the um, lemon lolly color ribbon, or the silver ribbon. We got rolls ready to go. And then on YouTube, the after live comments was Diane Moore. Congratulations to you winners. Let's go over to Miss Trisha and check to see, I'm just going on my computer here, check to see who she has chosen as winners. And again, it'll be a past prize. So if your name comes up, reach out to me and say, what do I get to choose from? Because I did, again, I didn't have time, but we have so many past prize winners. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I will read, um, I will read those names out just a few of them so that those people still have time to claim them and again not seeing her I was going to try to tag it up here um okay so I'm going to go ahead and pull up my list of prize winners and I'm going to call out your name if you've been a past prize winner and um can still claim your prize okay so we have Mary Ellen Motley uh, your name was drawn on August 23rd. You get 48 sheets of random designer paper. We have um, Diane DeBauer, who also gets 48 sheets of random designer paper. Um, your name was drawn on the 16th of August. Plus, and Trisha, would you mind putting those names up there one more time? Because I still did not um, see who they were. I'm not seeing the comment come through. Um, also, Diane DeBauer won twice. She was drawn from me and from Trisha that day. Um, she gets kit leftovers and a glue bottle. Um, and then we had, I'll just do this last one, on August 9th, because really you should be claiming your prizes within um, two, two weeks time, that would really help out. So um, then we had da, Janet Hathcoat. You won the Bright and Beautiful Memories and More Cards and Envelope and a half a pack of the cards. And you can see, I just put on the screen there, we have um, Nancy Wong and Linda Blankfield. Yes, congratulations to you guys. You get to pick from things that have not been claimed. <laughs> the unclaimed prizes, right? And yes, congrats to all the winners. I agree with you, Elaine, yay. Okay, um, thank you, you guys. I think that's it. I'm gonna let you go. Uh, it's at the top of the hour. I've announced everything. Thank you for joining me. Um, again, if you're new or you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel or join my, you know, subscribe to my Facebook page so you get notices. Subscribe to my blog so that you get things in your email box. I appreciate you coming today. I hope you had fun. And I hope you join me next week on September 6th, which is a Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Again, the blog post here. Hey, Alana. <laughs> the blog post here is not going to go live until... Um, 4 p.m. now at this point just because I didn't get to finish things before um, but yes the the you'll be able to access the PDF at that time so thanks everybody um, now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out bye bye <laughs>